We'd like to update you all on the status of our three upcoming headsets. Older the song, yet ever new. We are a bit behind schedule. At least we owe it to tell you why. And also let you know it won't be much longer as we have real progress to show for it. The Crystal Super Micro OLED, Dream Air and Dream Air SE all share a lot of core technology, such as micro OLED panels, Pimax's concave view, pancake lenses, and accompanying eye tracking developed by Toby. We're not just doing the last tweaks, but we're also readying the factory. Readying the factory isn't just cleaning up and mentally preparing. We have already produced several batches of the Crystal Super Micro OLED and the Dream Air. Starting up the production always takes some time as you discover hurdles. The first batch had an issue with 90Hz refresh rate and also missed eye tracking hardware, as well as a field of view of around 110 degrees horizontal, because it was using the optical stack for the Dream Air. Subsequent test runs have solved the refresh rate and the eye tracking hardware issue, and we have started external beta tests with these headsets. We now have produced the optical stacks with over 116 degrees horizontal field of view to put these into the optical engines and the headsets for mass production. We're still confident of shipping hundreds of Crystal Super Micro OLEDs this year. Because the micro OLED reuses the Crystal Super housing, the whole headset is super mature, so we're pretty confident of the stability. So far, all the testing is going really well. Several reviewers have also reviewed the pre-production sample, and we have loads of impressions from the roadshows in Germany and the United States. One area that needs to be worked on is eye tracking. All the headsets that are produced now include this hardware. The software fully works, but still needs some more TLC to have it work flawlessly with all eye shapes and positions. With Toby, we're confident we can pull that off. Eye tracking works with 10 infrared lights per eye at 90 Hz, achieving great accuracy at high frequency. Then the Dream Air. Like the Crystal Super Micro OLED, this headset has been tested by reviewers as well as visitors of the roadshow. The whole optical part is ready, but we're fine tuning the comfort, which was the main area for improvement from user feedback and also the opinion of many people in the office. So here we have a thicker foam and this mesh frame is adjusted for greater flexibility. The new 3D shape also fits more face shapes. We have also added improved magnets so that the face mask doesn't come off as easily. This mesh fabric is also improved for highly breathable material that still blocks out all the light. We're confident we will start shipping the Lighthouse version first, but we also have SLAM prototypes as well, which work without any base stations. Also the ringless controller that uses hand tracking for the wrist pose is nearing readiness. And we're still confident of shipping out some small batches this year. The Dream Air SE is following a similar development cycle. One thing that stood out literally were the lens edges. Those protruded too much and stuck into my face. Those are tweaked now, greatly aiding the comfort. Meanwhile, the Lighthouse faceplate for the Crystal Super has been redesigned to use USB-C rather than the custom-made pin connector that the Crystal Lite and the Crystal used. More details about this in the blog below. Another thing to note is that Pimax Play 2.0 is releasing soon. With this upgraded software client, we aim to keep the many customization options and powerful features that power our headsets, but make it more beginner friendly and rethink some of the layout. This also includes our upcoming hand tracking software. We are nearing shipping on these products, Crystal Super Micro OLED first. I know it's early, but let me wish you happy holidays and I wish to see you at CES 2026.